All right, so this is going to be part one of our convergent divergent problems with sequences. Okay, so we want to find whether this sequence is going to converge or diverge. All we have to do here is take a limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so we take a limit as n approaches infinity of 5 plus 5 n squared over n plus n squared then we can figure out whether this con converges or diverges okay and there's a couple different ways to do this okay you can do it the calculus way or the non-calculus way we'll start off with the non-calculus way we can just divide every single term by the highest power of n which we can just divide it by n squared okay if we were to do that so if we were to do that we would get 5 over n squared plus 5 over this would be a 1 over n plus 1 okay that's dividing every single term by n squared which is the highest power of n so then if we take that limit as n approaches infinity what happens is that you know anything with n on the bottom that's just going to become zero so this goes away and this goes away and we end up with 5 okay so this uh sequence would end up being convergent another way you can do it is the the calculus way right you can compare this to the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 plus 5 x squared over x plus x squared okay and you know as i said in the last video we're not able to when we're going to use L'Hopital, because that's what I'm talking about here, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. We're not able to do that with sequences because L'Hopital's rule only applies to a function with a real variable. Okay, so it's, you know, it doesn't apply to sequences, whatever. Now, if we do do L'Hopital's, because we're going to get a infinity over infinity case here in indeterminate form, what we can do is if we take, if we do a derivative of the top, we will get 10x do a derivative of the bottom and we'll get 2x plus 1. Okay, again, we get a indeterminate form. Okay, this will still be infinity over infinity. So we take another uh, L'Hopital's rule and we get 10 over 2, right? The derivative of the top being 10, the derivative of the bottom being 2. And that is just equal to 5, so that's also convergent. So you can do it either way, it's just, you know, how do you actually want to get there? So we have our next problem up on the board here. a sub n equals 5 to the n times 6 to the negative n. Now, we can easily rewrite this as 5 to the n over 6 to the n, which also is 5 over 6 to the n. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of time to, to just kind of hammer down the fact that, like, this is different than improper integrals, okay? Improper integrals, we were adding up all these, these different numbers, okay? We were integrating, right? With uh, sequences, okay, if we're trying to figure out whether it converges or diverges, we're worried about the actual value itself, okay? So we're, we're saying, if we have this graph, you know, whatever, I don't know what it's gonna look like. Let's talk about one over x though. Okay, y equals one over x. With improper integrals, we were try, trying to figure out whether this area was infinite or whether it was finite, okay? But with sequences, okay, we're not, that's not what we're focused on. So we have 1 over x, okay? So we have, I guess you could say, a sub n equals 1 over n, okay? What we're focused on is the actual a sub n value itself, right? This is the a sub n axis, this is the n axis, Okay? We're focused on this a sub n value. Is it getting, you know, where is it approaching? And of course here it's approaching zero. So for our answer here, this would end up being zero. And so will this, okay? Because it's basically the same thing. So you're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of 5 over 6 raised to the n equals zero, okay? You're multiplying 5 over 6 an infinite number of times by itself. Okay, and you're just going to get an infinitesimally small number, and you keep doing that onto infinity, you get zero, okay? 
Last one here, u of a sub n equals e to the negative 1 over n. If we're trying to take a limit here, okay, we take a limit as n approaches infinity, then we have e to the negative 1 over n, of course, in here. Well, as n approaches infinity, this fraction is just going to you know, have a larger and larger denominator, which means overall, it's going to get smaller. So you're going to basically have, you can kind of think of this as e to the 0, which is just going to be 1. Right, anything to the zero power is one. So this limit ends up just equaling one. All right, so these problems are literally just, you know, taking a limit. Of course, we're gonna be doing a little more rigorous example, you know, a couple more rigorous examples in the coming videos, but really you're taking a limit and that's it, okay? Whether you use, you know, lopy tau's or you know you're you're just dividing by the highest power like we did in the first example or just honestly looking at this and just you know doing a little bit of analysis you know that's it, that's really what it boils down to so that's going to do it for this video so if this video helped you make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left you can also view the playlist for sequences and series the explanation video for the convergence and divergence of sequences and the next video in the series Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!